Just before the Omicron variant of Corona reached its peak, a small team of technicians, engineers, astronomers and students headed up to Sutherland to install an instrument on the second port of the Lacedi telescope called Makudi. This video, narrated by the PIs or principal investigators and the mechanical engineer, shows the whole installation process from assembly to so-called first light. Okay, so Makudi is a low-resolution spectrograph, but it also has an imaging mode. It's more or less a copy of SPRAT, which is a low-resolution spectrograph on the Liverpool telescope. SPRAT was designed for a rapid robotic acquisition. The RA in SPRAT stands for rapid acquisition. The new low-resolution spectrograph being mounted on the Lacedi, we've named Makudi. Initially, we had two names that we uh, considered. The first one is Makordi, which means rainbow in Susutu, and that's obviously an apt name for a spectrograph because that's exactly what a spectrograph does. It uh, splits the starlight into, into individual wavelengths or colors, much like a raindrop creates a rainbow from sunlight. But we also considered another name, namely Ntimla, which is an Isikosa slash Isizulu name for a Cape White Sea Bream. You might think that that's a weird choice, but the reason for that is that McCordy is a, a cousin or a variation of an existing instrument called SPRAT. This is a very similar low resolution spectrograph that's mounted in La Palma. So SPRAT is an acronym for Spectrograph for Rapid Acquisition of Transients, but uh, SPRAT is also in reference to a European SPRAT little agile fish. And the reason why they picked that name is because the spectrograph is supposed to be agile and can quickly do follow-ups of transient. And so we thought that uh, an African fish name might also be appropriate. But in the end, McCordy won the vote, and so that's why the instrument is called McCordy today. To allow that, the optical design is this grating sandwiched between two prisms to make the optical path straight, so that you can image your target on the science detector, and then just put in the slit and the grism and take a spectrum. So you don't have to do any sort of offset. So this can be done robotically without an astronomer interacting with it. What makes this spectrograph interesting is that it's both an imager and a spectrograph. And the reason for that is that it employs a grism instead of just a grating to do the spectral spreading. And so this grism, the way that it works is that there's no deflection in the beam. So the beam is completely linear. To, to switch between spectroscopy mode and imaging mode, you just move the grism out of the way and of course the slit, then the instrument becomes an imager. We changed the design just a little bit since it has that sort of imaging capability anyway, since you can remove the slit and the grism. We added a filter wheel so that you can also use it as an imager or even a high-speed photometer. And this imaging mode is also a unique feature because this is how the spectrograph is going to do automatic acquisition for robotic mode. So it goes into imaging mode, it recognizes the field, the star that you want to do spectroscopy on, it then tells the telescope to slew to that star on a specific pixel on the CCD that corresponds to the slit. Once you're happy with that positioning, the slit and the grism are deployed and then the instrument becomes a spectrograph and you just go ahead and do your spectroscopy. Our purpose with this is pretty much the same as Sprat in Liverpool. It's to do low resolution spectroscopy, mainly of transients. So it's only on a small telescope, but it's fairly efficient. So that was the main kind of science driver behind it, was follow-up spectroscopy of optical transients. But of course, any science case that needs low-resolution spectroscopy can be tackled with McCordy. We started off this collaboration with LJMU, Liverpool John Moores University, and the main team there was the astronomer who had designed and built the original Spratt for his PhD, and then the Liverpool Telescope Engineering Group, so Stuart Bates, who was the mechanical engineer and project manager, and Ian Steele, who sort of heads up that group. He, I think, was very involved in the optical design and sort of overall instrument design and layout, and then a number of software people, Chris Mottram, Robert Smith, who dove in on the back end, trying to get pipelines working and get all the, the mechanisms responding the way they should. COVID did a whammy on this project. <laughs> Especially on the UK side, they had much stricter restrictions on workplace attendance than, than we did after our first initial lockdown. So things like that filter mechanism, we were detailing during lockdown from our bedrooms and trying to work through VPNs and slow connections back and forth through the CAD software that was only network run, running on the network. And that was interesting. And it delayed the, the assembly. 
the manufacture and the assembly were done in the UK. So workshops were down when they were back up and running. We were in a queue about two months long before our parts could get in and out. Once the instrument was together and power supplies were on the bench, they were able to set it up so that they could log in from home or remotely and just test mechanisms, test software, much like we did once we got it here. Right, so that was the Liverpool team. On the South African side, we had a number of people. There were the scientists involved, Rita and Nick, and the PI for the telescope we were going to bolt it on, which was Hannah. And then we had some engineering people on the engineering side, so... James O'Connor came up with the original filter slide mechanism. And Egan, who was responsible for getting Lissedi ready, so that meant getting a cable wrap installed, designing the brackets that would house the instrument crates, making sure that he kept communication with the Liverpool side. And of course, we needed our local electronics expert. <laughs> so Billy, you were obviously very involved in sort of cable selection, figuring out how this thing was going to be wired up, what we needed from them in terms of wiring up, how we were going to feed it and connect it through to our telescope systems. So yeah, I, I think in terms of a collaboration, this has honestly been one of the more successful ones I've been on. I think people did a fair job of communicating back and forth, and I think that's sort of lent itself to how well it's gone here on site. Mm-hmm. So one of my uh, big contributions on this project was doing lab testing once the instrument arrived at the SRO, and also working with one of our software developers, Carl, to develop the user interfaces for the software that was supplied with the instrument. And that involved working with the SDK that they supplied and, for instance, creating a graphical user interface that astronomers can use and and testing that software as well while it was in the lab. SAO has been very lucky this year. We've had a range of awesome interns. The intern that came with for this trip was Shalom. He's just completed third year mechanical and mechatronics engineering at UCT. So he's got just the right amount of experience, what he's seen in his coursework, and he's got buckets of enthusiasm. He's just (laughs) diving in there wherever he's needed. He's asking good questions. And he arrived just in time to be just as tall as Egan, (laughs) which was very useful in getting the instrument on and stay so it could be bolted onto the telescope at the right height. So when the instrument arrived in Cape Town, uh, we did some lab tests, including environmental tests. And once we were happy the the system was performing to its advertised specifications, we've taken this instrument up to Sutherland and it's now mounted on the Lissedi telescope. And now we're just checking that everything is working properly. And once that is completed, we will do some on-sky tests. So part of the team, Vili, Catherine, Nick, a bunch of students, Egan, came up on the 7th of December 2021. I arrived the next day. By the time I got here, the instrument was already assembled. Egan and Catherine were working on the cable wrap, still on the 8th. So after we brought uh, McCordy up to Sutherland, it took us about a day to just unpack it out of the box about another day to mount it onto the instrument. And after two days, we were already on sky and the first image and spectra looked beautiful. So the deployment of the instrument on the telescope went as smooth as we can have wished. (laughs) I think when I joined, it was due to go on telescope in May, 2020. On the 9th, the instrument was bolted to the telescope and on the 9th, we got first light. So we were on sky just two days after arriving in Sutherland. We also have Ulrich, who is a master's student in astronomy. He is being supervised by Rita Pretorius and I believe Paul Hruet as well. He has gotten the lion's share of telescope time in the first trimester of 2022. And McCordy is his master's project. And we picked for our first light targets, I wanted something to take a pretty image of and something to take a pretty spectrum of, since those are the two things that McCordy can do. So we observed a spiral galaxy M77 just to get a nice pretty picture. And then we took a spectrum of Feral 9. And I picked Feral 9 just because it has these spectacular great big emission lines, broad ones and narrow ones. Feral 9 is one of the discoveries of Tony Feral, who was a professor at UCT and did a huge amount of observing here in, in Sutherland. But of all the thousands of galaxies that he observed, that's the most famous one. Was it a success? I do think this deployment was a success. This is my first instrument deployment, or my first optical instrument deployment. There are people around here, including yourself, Vili, <laughs> that have seen many, many more instrument deployments and first lights, but I'm pretty happy with the way this one went. 
We got the instrument on and first light in two days without much hassle, without much heartache. So I think that's pretty good going.